The Man War Podcast is sponsored by HotMovies.com. Try out some ethical, paid-for porn for free with none of those hidden fees or secret subscriptions when you sign up at HotMovies.com and use the promo code MANHOR. Now let's get to the show. Welcome to the Man Whore Podcast. Happy New Year to all the fan whores, the whoreheads, and all of you who stay slutty. This is Billy Presida, and you are listening to the Man Whore Podcast. All right, I'm recording this hours before the ball drops, everybody. Maybe you're listening to me right now nursing a hangover. Maybe it's uh, January 12th and you're just catching up on your episodes. But welcome to the Sex Positive Podcast hosted by a comedian that's not a comedy show. This week on the pod, we've got fellow podcaster Alice Vaughn. She is one of the girls from the Two Girls, One Mike porncast. And we're going to learn a whole lot more about her in a little bit. But first... Show dates, people. Show dates. Uh, I've got some tour dates coming up all over the country that I'll be announcing in a little bit. But just to let y'all know, my last show here in New York City is most likely going to be January 15th at Silvana's uh, at 8 o'clock. It's an 8 o'clock show that actually is going to start probably more like 830. That's really more of a note for the white people uh, because it's what we call an urban show. They are not known for their timeliness but they're dope comedy shows. So come see me. Come say hello before I leave town for a little bit. Um, I hope all your holidays, whatever you have celebrated, went well. Mine, surprisingly well. Shockingly well, I should say. It was it was maybe even a Christmas miracle. I say it went shockingly well because I, everything was fine until like December 23rd. And then some shit blew up at my household. And uh, by all measurements, it should have not been resolved and yet somehow at the zero hour the evening of christmas eve one person who was ah said to the other person you know ah, and and luckily the person finally went ah and then you know we all got to wake up christmas morning loving each other my mother's a big fan of the phrase you know uh, never give up five minutes before the miracle and i was very grateful for that any Christmas my mom can have that's like a nice Christmas. And I don't normally like nice quote unquote things. I like true things. Yet for my mother, I want Christmases to be nice because I still hold some guilt. Um, I think I was like the first one to break the seal of not coming home for Christmas. Now to the point that, you know, as soon as I started coming back for Christmas, after I, you know, left the family for a couple of years, this sister doesn't come home for Christmas and spends it with a boyfriend. This one goes off and does a different thing. And and I'm just, you know, I feel bad for my mom because she hasn't had all her children at Christmas um, in a minute. It's a little bit my fault, but it's okay. Um, got good Xmas gifts, you know. Uh, shout out, by the way, to Gabby in the Pacific Northwest. She sent me like a, a PNW starter kit. She had like special local whiskey, some stickers, a t-shirt from like a Pacific Northwest, I guess, gear store lip balm like beeswax which i guess is a thing over there uh so thank you for that my dad you know a little bit more of a self-centered gift he gave me socks with his face on them um gave me some cool useful things you know i got some he gave me some windshield fluid he's really stoked about but then he also got me and my sisters each 3d printed statues of himself so if anyone wants to know where I came from, it's that guy. Uh, my mom does a little bit differently, but, you know, Bobby, she likes to do something called the cloud. It's Bobby's cloud, you know, like the cloud, that, that like the iCloud. Well, that's what she started doing over the last, like, three or four years where she'll get you a few gifts and then she just prints out her Bitmoji character on a cloud wearing a Santa hat. And then on the back of all these printed papers, she'll write out what the intended gift is. Like... Two tickets to a Broadway show of your choosing. But then also, but the cloud's very intangible. Like if you, let's say, didn't want to go to a Broadway show, maybe you want to go to, you know, a playoff football game. You could trade it in of something of somewhat equal value. Because it's intangible. It's in the cloud. It's not real, guys. It's a Fugazi. It's Bobby's cloud. 
<laughs> and I, I very and she she brought she bought me a Bobby's Cloud got me an improv level two class. So we we like the cloud. Me, I I threw it back at her and I did Billy's Cloud for her this year. Ha ha. This something weird that happened. I went to go see Star Wars for the second time on a date with this gal V, with whom I've been quite smitten. You've you've heard brief mentions of her here and there. And she's a Star Wars nerd. So we are go Star Wars is like her fucking life. And she fucking loves nothing more than her Star Wars. So we go see Star Wars. We go to Alamo Draft House. And we're sitting in the front row and, and she's sitting next to some guy. You know, she's and this is Star Wars and it's like just come out, you know. So she's excited. She's shaking her fists when need be. She's gasping at points. She's not talking during the movie, but she's being visibly excited. And this guy, this joyless fuckwad next to us, keeps like passive aggressively shaking his head. As if he wants her through the corner of her eye to to notice it and then to stop. And fuck that. It's Star Wars. We're not at Little Women. You know, it's like that. If you're upset about someone being animated, that's a movie that, okay, that makes sense. It's fucking Star Wars. So about like an hour or so in, something really, really sad happened in the movie. And it's immediately followed by like a shocking gasp reveal. So she just, you know, my date, she's crying, but then goes, (gasps) and this fucker turns over and just shouts, shut up. So um, being aware of the situation already, I was like, I got out of my seat because I'm going to, you're not going to talk to my date like that. Uh, Although it, it is weird when you're at like these new movie theaters, you have the reclining seats. So I'm like, I have my seat reclined. He screams, shut up at my girl. So I have to push the seat, the, the, the leg rest down. So I'm just sitting there like, oh man, when this is fucking, when I can get out of this chair, we're going to exchange words. I don't want to sound macho, but you know, I made it very clear to him, uh, very face to face. You don't talk to her like that again. And, uh, I'm really good. And he responded with like, oh, is that a threat? And I was so relieved because if anyone says, is that a threat? They're not a fighter. So when he's like, I was like, you're not going to talk to her like that again. Or we're going to have a fucking problem. And he's like, is that a threat? And in my, in, I have to keep a stone cold face on, but in my back of my head, I'm like, oh, thank God. I'm not going to get my ass kicked. Look, I'm not, I, I'll fight if it's needed, but like, I'm not saying I'm a good fighter. <laughs> um, have some fucking joy in your lives, people. Oh, and so and so she got self conscious. She leaves the theater, and then we had to deal with the staff and everything. This big old gay guy at customer service, this big bear of a motherfucker. He just he he could tell how hurt she was that she couldn't finish Star Wars. So he gave him, you know, gave her free tickets, and then gave her a big old hug. And oh, that was a situation. All right, let's do something a little more lighthearted, huh? Um, I you know we have this awesome secret facebook group called the champagne room it's uh it's for my patreon members and it's a really cool discussion space where you know we do a lot of like fun weekly threads like sexual achievement sunday where everyone just shares like what naughty things they got into but it's also a great place to like find community uh talk to like-minded people get advice so i wanted to share like a few of the the threads that have been posted recently just so you know what you're missing out on we got one guy who's posted like what lengths have you gone to to meet someone for sex Huh? Me? I've I've gone on airplanes just because a stranger on Twitter was like, I'll buy you a ticket if you come eat my pussy. I've done that. Uh, another person wanted to ask, hey, do you think two good friends can hook up and have it not impact their friendship? Others have asked questions about being poly or coming out to family. And sometimes it's just people sharing really fun, sexy memes. So have you ever been feeling like you've been missing a sense of community online? Might I recommend the Champagne Room? And I want to introduce you to three of the people in the Champagne Room right now during the fan whore appreciation moment. Okay. This is the part of the show where I'd like to give a shout out to some of the members of my fan whore community on Patreon. I want to give a thank you right now to Lindsay P. Hey, thanks for the raise. I must have been doing something pretty good because you gave me a little, a little boost. A little boost in your pledge. Much appreciated. Shout out to LJ who's quite the chatty Instagram gal. Thanks for uh, thanks for affirming my change over the years. She like recently binge listened like all the episodes in like 3 months and then uh and then she messaged me to say like how much I've changed over the years. She also appreciates uh, my appreciation for older women. Go get it, girl. And a shout out to Melissa Mejia who is 
one of my girlfriend's really hot friends who I don't even know if she listens to the podcast, but she saw Megan sharing nudes in the peep show. And she was like, what is that? And Megan kind of showed her what the peep show was. And she's like, I need to be in this group. So now she pays $10 a month just to be in our sexy group chat. Wow. And you too can become a member of our fan whore community and support the podcast and receive a slew of great rewards, such as access to our private sex positive discussion groups. Membership begins at just $2, so go get yourself extra access today at patreon.com slash manwhorepodcast. That's patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash manwhorepodcast. Uh, you know, but before I move on to this week's guest, Alice Vaughn, I put out something on my Instagram story recently. And hey, by the way, a lot of you think you're following me on Instagram. I promise that a lot of you are not. (laughs) I lost my Instagram like a year ago, so I made a new one in April. And a lot of you, I don't think, came over to follow this new one. So come on over to at Billy is Presida. Just just double check to make sure you're following me. Hey, anyways, I put out this thing on my story. I say, what do you want to see from the Man Whore Podcast in 2020? And I got one response that said that basically said, less politics, please. Republicans like to fuck too. And I just uh I had one response to that. Um, fuck you. Ha <laughs> ha. Cause here's the fun thing. I don't actually bring up politics that much on this show. Identities are not politics. Unfortunately, one party, the GOP, puts it in their party platform that they do not believe in equal rights for queer people. And fuck you if you don't want me to talk about it on the show because queer people are the reason this show fucking exists. The sex positive movement is because of queer people. So how dare you want to enjoy the fruits of the labor of queers over the course of decades without prioritizing them or without or while wanting to pretend like that's not happening? Oh, Billy, it's like I tune into your show because like I don't want to hear about all the identity politics. Too bad. Vote for better people so that way's identities are no longer considered political. Then I won't really need to talk about politics very much because then it will no longer be relevant to this show. Yeah, I'm sure Republicans fuck too. And I said this once, I'll say it again. GOP folks, Republicans, libertarians who happen to vote Republican. It's okay to believe what you believe about taxes and borders and healthcare and such like that. However. Ask yourself which issues are more important to you than equal rights for all Americans, civil liberties for all American citizens. You can be a Republican, by the way, who votes Democrat as you continue to call your local GOP reps and say, hey, I don't like your stance on this. Can you vote better? If you don't want us, if you don't want liberals to think that all Republicans hate queer people, then start voting for representatives and senators and mayors and presidents who don't try to strip rights away from queer people. I don't know. Pretty simple. So, no, you do not get to enjoy sex positivity in this sexual revolution of ours without a shred of guilt if you plan on voting for Donald Trump uh, in November. That's just how it works. And by the way, uh, Republicans are supposed to be all into that whole trickle down economic shit well uh this person has never given me a dollar on patreon a dollar anywhere else never bought a ticket to a thing has never bought merch of mine so uh, i i think you're full of shit lady and you know i bet that lady also doesn't pay for her porn either and that should be everyone's 2020 goal is to pay for just a little bit of your porn yes and you know it i got a site for you that's gonna make it uh convenient and affordable hotmovies.com HotMovies.com is this like pay per minute porn site and they've got like all the videos. They may not have like all the videos, but they have, they have all the types of videos with all of your favorite stars. They have all my favorite stars. I'll say that. And it's a pay per minute site. So what's great is that you don't have to go get six different mem- monthly memberships that you have to remember and manage. No, just go to Hot Movies and you buy like 300 minutes for like 30 bucks. And this is pretty cool. They're hooking up my listeners because they really like me. They really like what we're doing here at the Man War Podcast, and they want you to go try out their site. I use it myself. Go to hotmovies.com. Whatever package you sign up for, use the promo code MANHOR to get 20 extra minutes. That includes the free trial, so you can try this totally for free. Go sign up for the free trial, which is 20 minutes. Use promo code MANHOR. 
Now you got yourself a 40-minute free trial. So go to over to hotmovies.com. Go find some videos that you like. Use promo code MANHOR at hotmovies.com. And now for this week's guest, Alice Vaughn. Uh, she is one of the co-hosts of the Two Girls, One Mike Porncast. Uh, fun show. It, you know, they, they examine, I think they say, the, the holes and plot holes of porn. I was on, I think I was like episode five or something. We, uh, we analyzed the Clerks porn parody. And that was really fun. You know, not much else to say. Let's go ahead and get to my conversation with Alice Vaughn. One uh, year and yeah, it's been over a year, not two years. So, okay, because uh, we launched in September of last year. So yeah, yeah, we're, and we're you're getting up there. Already uh, re- respected voices in the adult entertainment industry. You it really would appear. Shouldn't. You should. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah. Is it? I, I mean, like, are you finding uh, your gangs any sort of treatment that is unexpected or uncomfortable? People want to listen to what I have to say, so yeah, that's expected and uncomfortable. <laughs> why? Why? Why is that uncomfortable? Um, I think just because growing up, I was always picked on, and no one wanted to hear my voice. So, I mean, psychologically, for me, I have my own problems uh, with people listening to me. But um, it's exciting, mostly. Yeah, you know, knowing that I can give good information to people who are not in the porn industry and then also be able to bring some of the scientific literacy and, you know, way of thinking that Yvette and I have to the porn industry as well. Wait, were you bullied as a kid? Uh, tons. Uh, did you did you know I was bullied? I'm not surprised. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Dude, you're a comedian. <laughs> I make the assumption like 90% of comedians are probably bullied. But isn't it wild that now like like when we were shut up and no one cared and everyone's like, no, that's annoying. And now people like fucking listen to us and pay us dollars for our point of view and a point of view that we were, you know, everyone's trying to shut us up about. No, oh, yeah. <laughs> Wait, when did you start seeing porn? Pardon? When did you start seeing porn? Like um, when did porn enter your world? I mean, I feel like it entered my world when I was, let's see, what was I? Maybe a preteen, you know, seeing the 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 boob on the channel where uh, you could kind of make the fuzzy out it's a boob. TV channel, yeah, 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 yeah that yeah. one. Yeah, or like uh, you, you are like me, like you're a part of the dial-up generation. So you know, I remember waiting for a picture to load sometimes 20 minutes for a still image for a video forget about it i would click 20 videos and just wait hours and then i'd come home later so i couldn't even do it when i was horny i'd have to like just preemptively download whatever napster let me and then when i am horny whatever like came through that was my porn that i got to see i didn't really because we had a shared family computer, I wasn't downloading porn. So instead, I had to resort to Cosmo, uh, which is a terrible resource for porn. But they did have always one or two pages that they took out of a romance novel and would describe the act of sex. <laughs> so look, I say describe the act of sex because they were describing something, whether or not it was actually sex, that is it's like I can't, is she, determined. Is she boning or is she like, you know, riding an actual horse? We don't know. Who is the black stallion a what or a who? I can't tell with your metaphors. <laughs> right? Yeah. I've gotten some of my worst sex advice definitely from Cosmo. Yeah? Well, uh, do you remember the worst one? Because I remember the worst one I saw. Uh, there are two. Uh, the first being one that I actually tried on a guy, and to this day, I, I, I picture that as the most horrifying moment probably for him, which was wrap a shoelace around his cock and then twist it back and forth. So essentially, Indian burnt rug a, burn a shoelace around his cock. Oh, uh. yeah. They told you to do that. No. <laughs> also, you, that's just unsafe. Are you tying a knot, right? You said or no? No, no. like just rubbing. Just rubbing. Well, that's yeah. fucking. Yeah, never do that. I, what was his reaction? Not good. <laughs> Confused mostly. Yeah. Did he just like? When do I get hard during this? <laughs> the worst part was I think he was already hard. I whipped out the shoelace. And then it completely killed the mood. Because with, why wouldn't it? And with like confidence, like, I've got a trick for you. How, <laughs> how old are you when you did that? Uh, I was at least 18. I'm, uh, I'm here right now with fellow podcaster Alice Vaughn. 
Hello, hello. Hi. Uh, some of y'all might uh, recognize her voice from a bonus episode uh, earlier this year or last year. So uh, you know you can go find that on Patreon. But yeah, I'm glad to, to have you back. Um, but you you host a a great podcast that has been popping off. It has. <laughs> Which is still unreal, but I'm so excited, and I've been so happy with how it's been working out. We're well over 67 episodes at this point. Yeah, uh, and do you want to tell them the name of your your cast? Yes, uh, Two Girls, One Mike, the porn cast. Mm-hmm. Uh, people can find it at twogirlsonemike.com, uh, or wherever you listen to podcasts, just like Billy's. And what is the premise of the show? Well, we review the holes and the plot holes of your favorite porn, but we also talk to people who are within the industry or industry adjacent yeah i was on there and i helped uh and we we recapped uh the clerk's porn parody yeah that was like episode 10 (laughs) oh yeah really was i was it that early yeah okay okay um but you had no you had no adult industry experience before this and your co-host the vet who's wonderful um also no prior industry like what makes people start a porn podcast a joke we took way too far, but <laughs> <laughs> you know, normally people get canceled over jokes they take too far. <laughs> yeah, they don't get a show and a following. Uh-huh. Uh, but what happened was, so we're both just really enthusiastic about our porn uh, and our porn viewing habits. We both come from uh, science communication backgrounds, and we just—it was one of those things where we were spitballing. Hey, what's a show that no one's done before? Mm. And at the time when we m- brought up uh you know through a brainstorming session uh because i think we were talking about the oscars and i said something along the lines of well you know there have to be an oscars of porn and at the time she had a bid when she was doing talks where she would say um compare a lot of, she was comparing a lot of science to how like you know when a, a sci-fi film comes out And Neil deGrasse Tyson will give his hot take no one asked for of what they got wrong in the film. Right. So we realized that we were really good at doing that in our own spare time. Uh, And we thought, let's just do a show about this. And it didn't exist at the time. And now since we've been around, uh, I feel like there's been several other shows that have popped up, even crediting us as, hey, yeah, we listened to Two Girls, One Mic and thought this was a great idea. And we want to review porn, too. Killer. Yeah. And and now you're you're friendly with all these uh porn star people. <laughs> well, I have to say the porn community has been the most welcoming community I've ever been a part of mm-hmm. hands down. Um what's fantastic is I mean, you have a ton of people who are very entrepreneurial in their mindset. I mean, they have to be amazing marketers to be as successful as they are because they can't just rely on film alone. They have to do film clips. Uh, they have to run their own website, shop. Uh, they have to interact with their fan base. There's a million Sexting, things. Sexting, camming, uh, exactly. selling the panties from the shoe. I was shocked. I, I didn't even realize this till like I interviewed my first porn star, Sarah J, realizing all these diverse revenue streams. And I was like, wow. Yeah. Like everyone calls like, por- a lot of people call porn stars like lazy or stupid. I was like, if you're going to make good money, you got to be smart, resourceful, and fucking hustling. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I love that a lot of them have that entrepreneurial mindset. They're really outgoing people. They're fun to be around. Um, and some of them are just fucking hysterical. Um, I have to say that, you know, I have sometimes more fun reviewing a porn with a porn star because we can joke about all the things as opposed to sometimes I'll have comedians on and I'll get uncomfortable talking about the porn. Um, But yeah, I mean... That's because they have an erection while they're trying to talk about it. Honestly, (laughs) I have to say, like most guys that we bring on the show, they're like, oh yeah, I watched the porn and like I I couldn't like come throughout the whole thing. It's like... Yeah, we've we've heard. It's like, this of course you can. I times. came during Clerks Triple X, <laughs> and I took notes at the same time. <laughs> You're a multitasker. <laughs> I am a multitasker. I jerk off while I watch MSNBC and check Reddit, um, and answer texts on my phone that are non-sexual at all. I can do a lot of things. I, I all jerk off for three hours, and I'm not even really turned on the whole time. I'm just absentmindedly stroking while I accomplish other tasks. Who doesn't? Yeah. <laughs> no, just a little tiddling to Rachel Maddow once in a while. Oh, oh it's almost always the Rachel Maddow. <laughs> or I'm jerking. I'm like, I have a half hour till the Rachel Maddow um, rerun that comes at midnight. And so I'm like, well, I could I could jerk for the next half hour and then I can watch Rachel while I clean up. 
<laughs> I wish this was fake. I wish this, I wish I was lying. <laughs> um, but yeah, I have to say that I really love hanging out with a lot of the people within a porn community, and a lot of them have become some of my closest friends at this point. It's a dope community because I here's why I like, it, and I you know I love the sex educator, ner- the sex nerds, and all that, but like the porn community is like there. It's the right part sex positive and right parts likes to have fun mm-hmm. sex positive world doesn't always like to have fun there or they like to have a very policed version of fun it, the fun can only exist within the specific space porn stars will let you like let loose a bit do jokes they like to laugh uh and that, that's why i'm like porn people those are those are the folks they hang out with now what i like is that me and a vet can kind of bridge the gap when it comes to certain things so for example there's a lot of i feel woo and misconceptions that hit uh, the porn industry so we can work on you know dispelling a lot of that but then what's nice is you know we could do the reverse and for a lot of you know your average everyday listener you know we can tell them hey sorry but the cum is fake on that specific shoot (laughs) yeah it's too runny (laughs) yeah no no that's just Cetaphil we promise yeah well how can you tell when it's Cetaphil um, it's definitely always Cetaphil on the promo pictures. So whenever you're seeing the stills, it, yeah, the yeah. Stills. But uh, in the in the video, can you tell, or is it just from the when you see the stills? The stills, um, I can't tell when they're shooting the actual thing. Um, but obviously, sometimes I'll need to like enhance a load. Let's say for a cream pie scene. You yeah. Know? Did you learn this from doing the podcast or did could you previously tell when it's Cetaphil instead of Jizz? No, I learned this from the podcast. Also, <laughs> what I learned from the podcast is, so I have a friend who was telling me that she was doing some shooting for a website that specializes in Futanaria. Do you mm, know what that is? I love Futa. I mean, like, I'll put it this way. When I'm in the mood for Futa, I'm really in the mood for Futa. But I'm not usually in the mood for Futa. Got it. So for our audience, that's beautiful women with massive cocks. Yeah. Now, basically... It's typically like cartoony. So sometimes they'll do them in real life with like massive strap-ons. Those are harder to find when they're good. But it's, it's you know, they'll be like cartoons of just like hot babes, big cocks. Like unnatural. We're talking unnaturally large cocks. Unnaturally. We're not talking about someone with like a nine-inch member. We're talking like, it, like it, you know, a lot of the... One of my favorites is the self-suck. But like they're barely bending over. They're just like kind of putting their head down and boom, there's this big, you know, whiskey bottle size circumferent coal. I don't know the word. I don't know how to say it. And then they just like lick the tip because it's too big to put in their mouth. That's the type. So oh, it's great. <laughs> my friend was doing a shoot for one of those where uh, you have the, you know, it's live. So, you know, her whole body. And then this fake prosthetic penis that's like 24 inches yeah. long. It's obscene. She's proud to have the biggest uh, cock on the site. I'm proud of her. <laughs> we should all be. Uh, but the best was when she was telling me that how she showed up on set one day and she wasn't feeling so well. So the woman whose house she went to uh, was happened to be making the cum because mm. apparently she had her own recipe. I guess maybe she got it from grandma. Uh, but she was making it over the stovetop and decided to add a little bit of lavender into the fake cum mixture. Okay. And then how where they loaded it up was not into a dildo. We it, it, the attachment to the dildo uh, was a thing, but the dildo actually attached to something else, which would um, which would project the cum. Well, can you uh-huh. guess what that is? I, I don't know, so I just want to say a shake weight, and I know I'm wrong. Oh no, uh, what, it was um, what are we talking about? it was a a super so- uh, so- soaker. Oh, love it! Yeah, that's great. <laughs> so attaching a super soaker to a dildo to shoot the fake cum out of. Well, so have you always been so like kind of filthy foul mouth? Because you have, for people who can't see you, you have a very Connecticut, like you are wearing earrings that are little bow ribbons that you would put on top of a present I look you were step wearing for- stepford wife. very stepford wifey except you're wearing a pornhub sweater but it's like a pornhub christmas sweater but that if you if it didn't say pornhub on it you'd be like oh she's going off to like a family function she's she you look like you host people which you do so like why on earth does the very nice connecticut looking lady uh do the porn show like what is your relationship with sexuality like where do you fucking come from um 
You know, I don't know why I have this fascination with sexuality. I guess when you're restricted as a kid, uh, that's what you find fascinates you when you get older. Okay. Um, and what I don't, kind of restriction? Oh, I don't know. I just, I mean, I didn't really watch much porn growing up. Um, you know, sex and dating wasn't really a thing when I was young. And why is that? Because of the bullet, I mean, why? Why is that? Is that parents? Is that just oh, you striking just, out or what? Striking out hard. <laughs> I was weird and awkward and socially just terrible. Um, so I had no social skills, so no game at all. And I don't know. I mean, I didn't know how to take care of myself. So look wise, I mean, I look at photos when I was a kid. I'm like, yeah, I'm not surprised. <laughs> I, I look at photos of her and I'm like, don't worry, it gets better. <laughs> well, I mean, I guess when did it get better? Um, It got better once I started doing sales jobs, actually, when I was in 18, 19, 17. Uh, and I just kept persevering and working through that. So with working sales through- jobs... What? Um, so I worked at a company called okay. Cutco. Uh, I meant working knives. through, you meant like working through the, the social skills or yeah. the what? So because I was in sales, I was forced to work with people. So I had to get better at my social skills. Right. You just want to stay into the mic. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't have whatever fancy setup Sorry. y'all probably have. Sorry. <laughs> well, so you're doing the sales jobs and I was like forcing you into it. and Yeah. And I just guess I got better over time. And I don't know. I mean, my fascination with porn and sex, I don't really know where that stems from, frankly. Um, what's really fascinating to me about the industry is what I love is how much hits porn first before it hits the mainstream. Mm -hmm. And I feel like, if anything, I've always had a bit of fascination with things that start in other sectors and then proliferate. Uh, I can't can get, say words. No, I mean, like, you are you are on paper so much smarter than me, and so I'm just enjoying you not know how to say this word. It's <laughs> – I have a lazy tongue, so <laughs> – Oh, well, you know. Yeah, it's lazy In there, too. Insert, insert whatever joke you guys want to make <laughs> right there. <laughs> the obvious one, of course. Um, but – I I love that everything hits porn first, everything from health, sexuality, migration laws, um, obscenity laws, uh, censorship. It really does hit. Blu-ray versus HD DVD. Yeah, you technology, know, <laughs> uh, payment processors. You know, everyone, you know, talks about all the restrictions that they're seeing in the different sectors online. Mm. Uh, but no one wants to talk about, you know, who they hit first. And it was the porn industry, mm -hmm. because it has still the stigma within the mainstream, especially with older generations, where it's taboo, they don't want to touch it, it's dirty, or at least they perceive it that way. And because of that, they're missing out this massive conversation on human rights and sex sexuality and uh, censorship and everything that ends up affecting everyone else. Yeah. Well, Twitter uh, is changing. Their th I think as of Jan 1, you know, so I guess it's already in effect if, if you're hearing this now. They're going to be restricting, you know, not safe for work content, like porn stuff. Uh, so they're not going to automatically shadow ban porn stars or not show take down porn stuff. But if you don't mark your account as like sensitive, then you'll get shadow banned. So you're going to I mean, we will see a bunch of people who didn't read and follow the rules. But also, like, why the fuck is this rule here? Yeah. Um, although some people do. Some people are requesting to have that. Some people do want to say, I want to have my content out here. I don't want to be shadow banned. I just want to be able to like let like leave the age check to twitter um which is another point of view i don't know some people basically some people don't want any of the restrictions some people want to battle like some people wish that instagram would let new like porn be on there but just like it has like an age verification if you're not 18 then you don't get to you know view it and it's all mm -hmm. maybe it'll all be kind of censored until you've confirmed your age um and some people are like fuck it like tits should be allowed to be out whenever yeah, I mean, and there's something to be said about being consistent with the rules you apply, but they're yeah. not consistent at all, and mm -hmm. that's the problem. I mean, right now, if I tried looking up uh, a porn star, you know, any popular one, hell, I could type in Angela White's name into Twitter, and her account won't show up unless I specifically write her name correctly. Entire name, yeah. Exactly. So that's not okay, and... 
I mean, it's funny because you'll have mainstream people who'll say, many conservatives frequently will say, um, well, you know, Twitter's going to start shadow banning us. Okay, cool. Well, they were doing it to the porn community for literally the past year. Uh Where were you guys? Yep. And they won't pay attention at all. Libertarians are fucking quiet. And I've talked to, you know, your your boyfriend is a a proud libertarian. Some of your friends are. And I've... They're fucking quiet about this shit until we start talking about like, well, I want to be able to smoke weed and say the N word on stage. It's like, well, then if you want to be all like freedom and what bodily autonomy, why aren't you talking about the whores? Mm-hmm. Like, you should be def- you should be at every whore rally that there is, whether it's like sex work decrim stuff or porn, you know, censorship. You should be loud and proud about that, just like you are about wanting to do your cryptocurrency and your free speech and whatever. Mm-hmm. Like, so and that's why I don't buy the libertarian shit because you're not. Con- they're not consistent. Some um, are, some aren't. Some aren't, but like... So the, like John Stossel has mm. been talking about, you know, why is porn illegal and why is sex work illegal for years. Good. I think someone sent me, actually, um, my partner, he sent me a clip of Stossel talking to people at the Bunny Ranch when Dennis Hoff was still alive mm-hmm. and then bringing those women to speak to someone who was anti-porn, like an anti-porn lawyer. Uh, and this was I, well over 10, 15 years ago, yeah. easily. And 10, 15 years ago, you just brought a porn person onto anything and automatically was like, ooh, ah, now they're kind of like, they're around because we see them on social media and stuff, which mm-hmm. I think helps like normalize a little bit because like, oh, they, yeah. she's got an Instagram like me. Um, she, you know, is just making coffee today. Um, but, but yeah, the, the, also the rules aren't consistent because like a porn star will get some, um, even if they're not posting any nudity or breaking the rules, they will be in a bathing suit looking sexy and then, Kim Kardashian, Amber Rose, any of them will post the same, ex- could have the same exact post. The porn star person will have it taken down just because they do porn off the platform. Exactly. And that's such crap. And honestly, it's making me, re- I, I've been considering certain like career options, certain content I might want to start doing. And now I'm I, more and more, I'm thinking I can't do that because if, you know, if a platform discovered that my I did an OnlyFans, so I did porn in a very specific place off platform, and uh, you know, they maybe they'll be like, oh, maybe we'll just take him off our platform. He he does porn. So I'm like, people, anyone who's been wanting to pay to see me naked, I am so sorry. It may not be happening in the near future because I'm too because fucking no one wants to fight for the porn people. It's true. Um, although what's really nice is I saw actually um, Kate. Uh, Diamato, I believe. Her yeah, last name yeah, is. she's great. Yeah, great she, Twitter follow, everyone. Oh my god, she's so knowledgeable and fantastic. If you're not already following her, you have to follow her. Um, but she actually, uh, for example, started uh, discussing that there's legislation that she and a representative from California are going yeah. to be introducing to actually start researching the effects of SESTA FOSTA. So call your reps, people. <laughs> yes. Um, But that said, so going back to consistency. So yeah, the problem is that there's currently no consistency at all. I mean, if they were to make the argument of, hey, well, we're going to ban nudes, but we're going to allow all of this, um, that would be a different conversation. But as of right now, they're banning, like, for example, Jen Gunter from promoting the Vagina Bible, which is all about, you know, health, uh, women, uh, let's, that's all about vaginal health and all the information that you need as far as your vagina. And Jen is just an OBGYN. She yeah. literally does nothing that's porny. Vagina is a medical yeah. term. What are we supposed to say, JJ? That's yeah. not proper. Um, How aware were you of all this stuff before you started the podcast? You know, I was kind of a little bit aware because of my crayons. From uh, I experienced some censorship there. But I didn't really understand it until I started the podcast and seeing it everywhere within that community. And then it blew in my mind because mm. I kept just seeing it tumble over into the mainstream. And the mainstream was just completely bewildered and unaware of it. As mm. if, oh, this came out of nowhere, but everybody it's in the happen. porn yeah. community saw it from a mile away. My mom, I've got my mom on the sex work decrim uh, bandwagon. Uh, Bobby's on board. But yes. she was like, I, you know, I gave her like an Andre Shock the article one day. And I was like, I just want you to read that. And so she read it and she came back. She's like, <gasps> I had no idea that cops could just lie to you and then have sex with you and then arrest you. This is terrible. And I'm like, ah, we got by. You know, it's just people just don't know. Cause, yeah. uh, I mean, one, people don't know most things because they don't read anymore. But even when people were reading, they didn't really read because, you know, again, 
you just don't talk about whores and we don't stick up for whores and then then it's gonna it's gonna come after i was just sharing today the twitter guidelines stuff as like comedians get on fucking board y'all need to be worried about this because it starts with well we want to just censor you know what are we consider sensitive images what happens when it starts being censoring um sensitive words what happens when it starts like it will if you swear if right you now. if you're using fuck in your in your tweets, you know we're gonna put that. You know, oh, you can still do them, but it's gonna be behind a thing. Someone's gotta click a thing, age verify. It's that's gonna happen if we don't start uh, fighting for it now. You know, it's a slippery slope, and I know people say, well, don't use a slippery slope argument, but it's very easy to see. I mean, Facebook is a great example. Um, I've had friends who are banned from discussing male circumcision. I've had friends who are banned from from discussing. Uh, female uh reproductive health i've had friends talk about uh sexual preferences yeah. uh, i've had friends who are banned for a number of things because the thing is now they've built in sexual language into facebook's uh terms of service so what is sexual language doesn't netflix and chill count when they say pornography the big thing that, and then i've been having this beef with patreon for a while because patreon at their the soul of patreon wants to let us do whatever we want to do on there their credit card, and I've had conversations with people, and I already knew the answers, but like they had them confirmed. It's the credit card processors yeah. who are being tight on it, and mm -hmm. they're only being tight because their lawyers said there's this outdated obscenity law that maybe, in theory, kind of could, you know, be used to prosecute you. And then Patreon has to, in order to protect the whole, you know, do what they do. So they don't allow pornography. Then you ask them what's pornography, and they're like, they do have some guidelines that are helpful, like. I can post a soft dick, but it can't be a hard dick. I've literally emailed them. <laughs> Shut up. I'm 100% serious. I have sent Shut dick the pics front in. Door. Mm, very real. I've had to ask them, is this dick soft enough? And then they all say it's just like, if it's meant to arouse. And I've been pushing them hard anytime I see them mention it. Because like a good picture of feet could arouse people. Was it meant to arouse or not? We don't know, but you know, there are a lot of things arouse a lot of people. So what the fuck do you mean when you say pornography? The Supreme Court honestly needs to update, you know, their language because the last thing they gave us was literally, well, you know it when you see it. And that doesn't help anybody. Even people yeah. who want to follow the rules, like you gotta give me rules to follow. I'm a little nervous though, if this current Supreme Court were to update the language, considering how many conservative justices we do have. Mm-hmm. So, but I, I again, it, I, you know what? Honestly, we need. Cl I need some clarification. God. Um. The good news is, though, is that the current Supreme Court does value freedom of speech and pulling back obscenity laws. I think a great example is earlier this year, back in August. Um, what they did was they changed the language when it came to obscene. Uh, Trademarks? Uh, obscene trademarks. Yeah, yeah, I saw that one. I was excited because I got to finally trademark my Offensive Crayons logo. Yeah. Because before I couldn't trademark it at all. It was against the law. Mm -hmm. But now it's hysterical because I have friends who work in the trademark office and are like, yeah, we're, we've gotten so many trademarks coming in. There's literally a shit person. There's a fuck person. There's a like dick person. So there have been people sitting yeah. on a bunch of ideas for decades being like, oh, one day when I can trademark is someone just like pulled out an old folder and be like well the supreme court said i can trademark all this and it's just every variation of fuck this and fuck that i bet <laughs> it's not a cheap process but yes you can do it right now mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's kind of like the golden rush of like trademarking profanity words mm -hmm. right now was your so i mentioned your boyfriend's libertarian did you have to get him on board with some of this adult stuff or was he kind of already there with he was already there. I mean, he's very sensible, so he saw no issue at all. And and how he supports me. And how did you two meet? Speed dating. Really? Uh huh. Did I not know this? I don't think so. No, because you know I host speed dating on the side sometimes, right? No. <laughs> I hosted a speed dating event last week for people who are over forty. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> That's incredible. Um, here in the city. Yeah, do you I, remember uh, the company? <laughs> yeah, I'm uh, so curious if it's the one I've worked for. I think it was New York Speed Dating. Ah, okay, okay. <laughs> um, wait. So, why don't you? Uh, what was the speed dating process? Was that your first time speed dating? It was. It was and, my first time. His second time. Uh, and what was it like? So it was really funny, actually, because I came alone. And uh, so all the women sat around and uh, the guys are supposed to, you know, spend like two, three minutes with each of us before they move to the next. 
uh, well, what ended up happening was, well, a couple things that evening. So first off, I didn't pay attention to the rules, which is not unusual. <laughs> so apparently you were supposed to write down the name of each and every suitor and then circle the people you liked. I only wrote down the name of the people I liked. So that was a whoops. Uh, so what I ended up doing was after throughout the entire evening, I wrote down one name. I'm like, shit, okay, uh, let me just write down some other guy's name that was here. Jot down his name, gave in the two names to the person. A few days later, I hear back from the other guy. I look up <laughs> profile, um, my spouse, yeah. and turns out this other guy I wrote down was his friend. <laughs> I wrote the nicest rejection letter ever. To the point, actually, that he ended up using it on other women until he found his wife. <laughs> what was in this rejection letter? I don't even remember, but it wow. wasn't that good. You were just complimenting him, and that wow, that's it's like me with my Reddit uh, success story, like random acts of muff dive success stories. Women like will write these like nice testimonials, basically, and then I will use them like if I apply for an ad, I will link to a few of them. The back, and here are some other women I totally did not rape or murder who said they had a nice time. So if you if you would like to also experience that, <laughs> that's that's incredible. What what, what also happened that yeah. evening though is that uh, apparently there was another speed dating going on that didn't work out so well between sugar daddies and sugar babies. So all the women from that event came to my event, mm -hmm. uh, which was for young professionals. And all the guys follow them too. So next thing I know is everything's out of order. And I have this guy and I'll never forget him because it, it's so comical. The guy basically looked like a Russian mob boss built like a wall, hairy chest. Built like un wool. Oh, 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 built like, <laughs> like wool. wool. <laughs> <laughs> I'm built like Berlin wall for Reagan lockdown. <laughs> <laughs> hairy chest gold chain such a trope um he sits down next to me and he's like i can take you out of my airplane when do you want to go I'm like never <laughs> i don't know if i'm gonna come back from this plane ride will i survive what did you think of the actual speed dating process like what was that experience like it was great i, I would like, absolutely you like that yeah recommend it to anyone because here's the thing before that i pretty much was speed dating with guys but not in a good way okay. meaning i would go on show up on a date and then within two three minutes i'd realize we didn't have chemistry i'd only order water and then after a few minutes i'd say look you're a really nice guy but how 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 long till you cut because i also i also advocate cutting first date short if you just know for that you know Good. how long do you give sometimes i would give him like five minutes sometimes wow. 10 but yeah i remember giving one guy wow. like three minutes sometimes you don't even get your drink for t like it take it could take 10 minutes I just to get the drink i give a drink sometimes. i always give everything an hour even if i'm like because especially if i already had to go to get there i'm like i will stay for an hour and if i'm like i'm not about this like an hour and five i'm like look it was nice but i'm not feeling a thing uh so i'm gonna get going <laughs> I just that, didn't that want to waste harsh. my time. I know. It was horrible. I just kept dating and dating, and I could never get on a second date. And when I met my you know, partner, it, he got me on a second date. When you say you couldn't get on a second date, these are is pure for the most part because you were not interested. Yeah. And what type of – I guess what were you out there looking for? You're also a very rational, like left-brainy person. Like your Twitter handle is at Rational Blonde. Like it's – you know, so this the fact that you like speed dating makes total sense to me because, like, I could see you going like, "This is efficient." I, <laughs> yes, I stay in one place. They come around to me. I've now processed ten applications, and you know, it's like I could totally see that being. If you know, had you not met Michael, like, you would have just been all about speed dating. <laughs> um, so I guess I don't know. Like, was there anything that you were looking for in particular? I mean, it's the. Same things most people are looking for. I mean, you want to have physical attraction. You want to have good conversation. You want to have, I mean, you know, I looked for a good sense of humor, someone who is interesting and smart and, you know, I could work well with and a number of commonalities. And I did a lot, a lot of online dating. And that's the problem of online dating. By the way, I was pre-Tinder dating. So I Yeah, never, I forget how long y'all have been together. Over 70 years. Jesus. <laughs> 
yeah. yeah, but we existed. That's the thing. I was in a time before Twitter, or not Twitter, uh, Tinder. Tinder. But there was so, still OK Cupid. And, like, the, plenty of fish. It was Mesh. back when dating com. sites were dating sites. Exactly. Not apps. Exactly. So I still had to have a bit of a conversation. But even after having a conversation, the person might be completely different when you meet them in person. And that would happen a lot. Mm-hmm. And I just hated wasting my time it was so frustrating so what was it like uh so so describe what <laughs> sat down at your speeding table tell me things tell me feelings tell me vibes what i definitely remember is oh uh, and he, i'm gonna be completely honest yeah. i i lied to him the first time i met him so here's the thing i could tell he was a nerd I just needed to figure out what kind of nerd. So I said, Star Trek or Star Wars? And he said, Trek. And I said, I love Star Trek. And for him, that's what made him want to go out with me again. He was like a hot blonde who likes Star Trek. I can't ever find those things together. (laughs) Now, I do love Star Trek. I have watched The Next Generation. We're watching it together. And I absolutely love it. However... After like the third date, I was like, look, I have to be honest. I've never seen the thing. <laughs> Picard what? I don't. Yeah. Is he, is he the is he the bus boy? Is he the captain? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> have you watched the Star Trek porno, by the way? Not yet. Would you have him on just to do a Star Trek porno one? No. I feel like that would be a good one for I, I, I need like someone who's a hard nerd on Star Trek. <laughs> okay, okay. I don't know who yet, but I'll figure it out. And then, so what was, uh, I mean, again, speed dating's really short. Uh, I mean, it depends the company. I've heard of companies, by the way, that do like five, seven minutes. I'm like, whoa. The company that I sometimes host for, you know, it's three minute dates. People complain, but I go like, if it's a bad day, three minutes is a fucking eternity. Oh, yeah. Right? So like, I think that, but so it's short, but what that, that three minutes, like what's it kind of like? You can sense he's a nerd and what, what else is standing out for you? Um, that's pretty much it. I don't remember much else. Well, what, I mean, it was, what was it that made you want to go, I guess, see him then again? We had a very good brief conversation. I was attracted to him and I don't know. I mean, he checked a lot of boxes. So that's why I wanted to see him again. What kind of, what boxes did he check besides nerd and attractive? That's pretty much it. That's, those are your boxes now? (laughs) Nerd, attractive and good conversation. So... It's such a it's it, not it's such a short find... list but a hard list. Yeah, but that's the thing. It's not good easy to have a good conversation always with, you know, mm. someone you're looking for romantically, you know? Yeah. Because there's people where it's like, Well, you're hot and God, I want to have sex with you, but you're so stupid. <laughs> I've had those guys where I'm like, fuck, I want to bone him, but so dumb. <laughs> so dumb. Why? <laughs> Why God? And seven years is uh that's uh, so you you said partner and spouse so you got, y'all aren't married right domestic partner domestic partner now look I have it on paper I have DP'd someone <laughs> oh God you've been <laughs> waiting to tell that uh no wait um now I've had someone on here who was common law married but that's separate from domestic partnership so can you explain the difference between getting married legally and domestic partnership uh well common law marriage doesn't exist in New York and a number of states okay so, doesn't no. Oh. Yeah. Wait, so then what's domestic partnership? Um, So domestic partnership was, uh, so that was the term that a lot of people used pre-gay marriage Mm -hmm. or marriage, as we now just call it. Uh, So domestic partnership allows you to have a lot of the same benefits as marriage. So for example, um, you know, tax benefits, uh, health, life insurance, uh, different things like that. Uh, However, it doesn't give a lot of benefits as far as uh property so for example like um if we had kids and you know those kids you know uh we we want to share a house you know and we'd have to right now get a lawyer involved for doing that or you know for me to get power of attorney versus you know a ma- you know in a marriage you automatically get, get that. that um so because we're not having kids domestic partnership actually made a lot of sense plus i honestly i mean the reason that we dp'd in the first place is because i actually needed health insurance at the time because i didn't know if i had cancer or not so (laughs) 
<laughs> I'm glad we have some clarity now, I would assume. You know, true love. Yeah. Uh, that's why. Uh, but in all seriousness, it's very little difference in going to a courthouse for a marriage certificate. You pay like 25, 35 bucks. You show your ID and they're like, all right. You have the certificate now. Uh, the good thing is when dissolving the domestic partnership, you either dissolve it by just letting the county know or getting married, you know, whether that person or someone else. So pretty simple. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. And seven years is a, is a pretty legit amount of time. You know, what? like, how do you keep... I, I can't get anyone to stick around for more than a year or two. So what's your like what what do y'all do actively to keep the relationship strong? I'm assuming it's strong. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's tearing apart right now. I have no <laughs> idea. I haven't asked recently. Um but like I don't, I guess like what what are, like what kind of communication do y'all have? Do you have to do things to kind of keep the romantic spark alive? Like do you do you plan date nights? Um so we definitely have a couple nights a week where I make sure to, you know, see each other. We see each other. I make dinner. Uh, we hang out on the couch and watch Star Trek. Um, but I mean, other than that, I feel like the reason it's worked out so well is because we are so good at communication and we never fight. And when I say we no, y'all both just file like amicus briefs about like something you're you're disgruntled about. <laughs> you feel like um, this is my brief about how you handle the dishes. So. <laughs> Uh, if you and your counsel will review, uh, you can call my people and then we can resolve this issue. <laughs> um, I mean, we do want to be open about, you know, hey, this, you know, this specific thing you did and or said bothered me. Can I talk to you about it? And we make sure that the other person is in a place where they're going to be receptive to hearing well, okay, I'm ready to hear this. Let's talk about this. Let's talk about why this bothers mm. you. And yeah, it involves some digging and, you know, some time, but, you know, it's worth it. And uh, yeah. That's what's made it work. Now, as far as sexually, you know, yeah, we've definitely changed a lot of stuff up over the years. And what's cool is, um, you know, once I started doing the porn cast, you know, we were able to be more open and honest about, frankly, things that we liked. And, you know, I want to say the sex has gotten way better. Yeah. Plus, I, now I get so many more dildos. Oh, yeah. It's Is great. It, I've literally never paid for a sex toy for myself in my life. Right. I own two motor ponies. Like, I've never had to pay Son for them. Son of a bitch. I know. <laughs> That's awesome. I've actually had three, but one of them, the third one was for the purpose of giving away. Nice. <laughs> um, you know, and, and you don't have to obviously say what the things were, but when you had, you said that doing the show cause y'all to be more open about things you guys wanted in bed. So that, you don't have to say the things, but can you describe what the conversation about that is kind of like, about like how one's presenting a thing? Did somebody say no to a thing and how that was handled? Yeah, it was one of those things where it's like, hey, let's try this tonight. Or, um, you know, I've always wanted to try blank and, What's nice is, you know, we can talk about what we like and what we don't like, what do we want to try again and what we don't want to try again. And I mean, I find that enough, especially I find when it comes to a lot of straight couples, um, as opposed to um, cis couples, for some reason, have this notion of, hey, people are going to get together, mash their bits, and then it's going to be great, you know? Um, no. <laughs> I don't know why a lot of, you know, cis couples think that where no one talks about like, well, what do you like? Well, what do you like? Whereas I find like a lot of my, maybe it's just the, all my friends who aren't straight, they have great sex that they talk we about. We are also, into. we're also in a bubble of people who like, to some capacity, fuck professionally, whether on camera for the purpose of talking about it, for the purpose of writing about it. Um, I want to be clear, queer people, y'all are totally capable of being bad in bed with each other, too. I just want to be clear about that. Y'all can suck in bed as well. <laughs> you know, if you want to, I get, you know, that's why everyone feel equal. Um, so has, has one of, has either of you proposed something in bed and the other has, like, kindly rejected it? Um so far, no. No? Yes. So everyone seems like willing and game for things. That's good. Yeah, everything's really been in our comfort zone so far. Um, and we're having a hell of a good time. Good. So like I, I spent, uh, you, you hosted uh, for like a weekend uh, at your place. And if I, I hope I'm not speaking out of school, y'all y'all had a difference at one point where like, we I think we were playing like Exploring Kids. We were playing some game, a Scrabble. I think we were playing Scrabble. It's just, but that seemed like a great example of like something happened. You 
separate yourself from the situation. Mm -hmm. A conversation happened. Next morning, y'all seemed good. And like, Mm -hmm. this seems to be in character for what you're describing, that your communication skills are good, that you guys can have some sort of quarrel and resolve it. Because a lot of people can't do that. Like, what's going through your mind? Like, if you guys are having a disagreement, like, what do you have to tell yourself in your head as you talk about whatever the issue is? Just being open to their perspective. That's really it. Yeah. Have you always had that skill set when you're like disagreeing with people or maybe past boyfriends or I kind of just always want to understand. I mean, maybe it's, you know, me coming from a sales background, um, wanting to understand be in the shoes of the other person. Um, because I mean, no one is out to get anyone. Everybody just has their own way of perceiving something, you know, whether it's a situation. And really, I mean, that's the problem with most miscommunication. It's just a misunderstanding. Mm -hmm. You know, there's no reason to blow up about most things. Uh, But yet people do. If you trust at the core of everything that, like, we love each other, care about each other, if that's at, like, the core of the context of whatever happened, you know, I think that's something that can be a guiding light. Like, I've had to tell my girlfriend, like, if I say something that, like, hurts your feelings, you if just remember that, like, I probably didn't mean to. So whatever we do going forward in that conversation, make it under the assumption of, like, I love and care about you. Now let's talk about what I did that accidentally hurt your feelings and vice versa. Like I try to never assume like someone's trying to be mean, you know, misunderstanding. Isn't it wild? Like, I mean, thinking back, like it sounds like you, like me, were also very awkward and um, had a hard time with with members of the opposite sex. Do you look back at, you know, a younger Alice and have thoughts considering your current state? Not just like the fact that you talk about porn um now on the internet for people to hear and that you've had a viral video of you riding a vibrator um <laughs> go up on Pornhub but like just that like you're in a stable committed relationship where you describe the sex is great the communication's great i assume a 10 years ago was that something you thought you'd be in um i don't know honestly what i thought i would be in is so different i mean i think the thing is I had such. Do you think it would be more or less Stepford? <laughs> like, is like, are, is your Great relationship question. not as Stepford as you thought, or did you think it wouldn't be this much? <laughs> I thought I would be a doctor. I thought I would. I don't know. I mean, I would technically be done with my residency by now if I had gone that route. Um, I don't know. I just. I thought I would be a guy in med school. I thought I would be in a different country for education. You know, I, I had so many other expectations. I thought maybe I would change my mind about having kids, but that that definitely happened. didn't happen. Mm. I definitely don't want them still. Um, you know, my perceptions of what I wanted when I was a lot younger are different than they are now just because I'm finally, you know, I ended up meeting someone who I can be open and honest about everything with and frankly you know my social skills did develop you know a lot better and i have a good social circle and good support system and good friends i could just joke around and be dirty with yeah well that i mean yeah i i also am in a very different place than what i expected so um i think we're doing great I think we yeah. do great when we go to the high school reunions. <laughs> <laughs> My high school reunion was so weird. Uh, oh, you went? Yeah. What, I, uh, what, your tenure was when? Last year. Last year, okay. Yeah. And I went. Uh, it was a couple of months after launching in the podcast. I had just flown back in from like a conference that I had to go to. And God, so number one, everyone was so boring. Number two, I still hated so many people. Right? Like, Some things don't change. No. <laughs> Some people don't grow out of being a dick. Yeah. They just have, they're a dick that has a salary. <laughs> um, honestly, I just have no interest of continuing relationships with a lot of, you know, people from high school and mm. younger days. I mean, it was funny. Last year, I actually had a drink with one of my uh, middle school bullies because she contacted me and she's like, hey, I see you're doing really well. Are you going to be in town anytime soon? I thought to myself, you've got to be fucking with me. (laughs) And she was, she actually acknowledged like within the first 10 minutes, she was like, I was such a dick to you and I'm so sorry. I love that story. That's amazing. Yeah. I've thought about having my grade school bully on the show. Um, but I'm like, I don't, there's not a fucking Some people chance. don't change though. That is true. I mean, yeah, but then, 
you know, I can show everyone how much of a dick he was. <laughs> <laughs> that or he's grown and changed. Who knows? Everyone's capable of change. Guys, remember when I hated on demisexuals all the time? People change. <laughs> <laughs> just lots of nodding. <laughs> um, Maybe he's an even bigger dick. Who knows? I, you never know. He yeah. always had a Napoleon complex. He's a short man. Um, Alice, this was fun. This was fun. I, By the way, Napoleon wasn't that short. He was 5'6", five, 5'7". Five, Look, if you ask chicks on Tinder, apparently that's very, very short. I don't think it is. But, you know, I think people can be loved at any size. It was mostly his enemies who were just trying to spread pro- propaganda that he was even shorter than that. See, but I, that's just weird to me because, like, I would think, wow, the short guy is, like, been con- like beating people in the battlefield. It, that would make him even more impressive to me. Because I would be like, oh, wow. Like, I thought it was going to be, like, you know, a George Washington motherfucker. But he's a, he's a little guy and he's still kicking ass. I don't know. That, that wouldn't deter me. That would make me more scared. It's like it's like uh, it's like when Chappelle talks about like um, you know the white guy in a group of friends of black guys where he's like, watch out for that white guy because you don't know what he had to do to earn those dudes respect. <laughs> That's true. All right, well, Alice, you know, why don't you go ahead and tell people where they can find you? Where uh, you know they already should check out the podcast. Uh, you know, do the plugs. I know, I know, you like to do the plugs. Do the plugs. <laughs> well, you guys can find me, Alice, on Twitter at Rational Blonde. I mean, I have Instagram, but I haven't posted in like eight months. Oh, <laughs> at a protest? <laughs> I just don't like it. Or just it. don't like it. Yeah. Um, so Twitter at Rational Blonde. You could find the show Two Girls and Mike on all the platforms. Two Girls One Mike uh, dot com. Uh, Two Girls One Mike the Porncast. Um, and you guys could pick up my crayons, offensive crayons at offensivecrayons dot com. Oh, we didn't even talk about the crayons. I know. Um, do you have like 10, 15 minutes? Do a little bonus yeah. up so you got run. All right, let's talk a little bit about the crayons. Let's and do uh it. and I may I may or may not have a, a, a couple other questions. So uh Patreon people, tune in tomorrow. Uh you'll hear some more of me and Alice chat. Uh but for now, why don't you go ahead and say goodbye to everybody? Bye everyone. <laughs> Again, go check out her show, uh, Two Girls, One Mike, The Porn Cast. Uh, and for all of my $5 and up fan whores on Patreon, you're going to hear her bonus episode tomorrow where we're talking about offensive crayons and offensive jokes. It's uh, I, I enjoyed it. She's fun. Uh, make sure you follow me on the socials, of course, because you want more of this type of content in your life. We got dope memes going over on the Man Whore Podcast Facebook fan page. I'm slinging jokes over on Twitter at the Billy Presida, and you know I'm dropping the occasional thirst trap on Instagram at Billy is Presida. Honestly, just search Billy Presida, and those things are going to show up. Have you wanted to say something to me? Do you want to share your thoughts, your questions, your booby pictures? Do you want? Are you a Republican who's just really pissed about my stance on the GOP? Shoot me an email at manhorpod at gmail.com. Yes, I do read all the emails. I have a lot of free time. Next week is uh, episode 300, and honestly, I can't think of a better excuse to join up on Patreon. Join this sex-positive listener community. And also, you know, clear your conscience knowing that you have enjoyed hundreds of free episodes, and now you want to throw a few dollars over my way. Become a member today at patreon.com slash podcast, and you can join us in the champagne room tomorrow. Hope everyone had a good New Year's. Hope you're recovering from your hangovers okay. Hope you are uh, at least attempting your New Year's resolutions. 2020, stay slutty. <laughs>